Okay, so what is the common thread of reproductive diseases? And I've touched a little bit on that, but they're subclinical. And again, I, I like to use this iceberg. All you see is the tip of the iceberg, and so you, you go out, you have BVD circulating through your herd. You drive through those cows, they look the same way as if they didn't have BVD, right? Or you've got trick in your herd. You go out there, that bull's gonna look like any other bull. Those cows are gonna look like any other cows. They're just not going to deliver calves, or they're not gonna deliver as many calves or healthy calves. Okay, so reproduction, and if, if you're in the cow-calf business, then reproduction is the key. Why are you gonna keep a cow if you don't want to get her bread and wean a calf, all right? So, reproductive, uh, reproduction's big. The cow, first of all, she must become pregnant. That's important. Then she must deliver a calf, right? So we're talking about, okay, that's not, uh, the spa data tells us we can get about 90% of them pregnant on the average. That's, that's pretty common. But we've got to deliver a calf. That's going to go down a little bit. But then we've got to wean a calf because if we can't take that calf to town, in other words, if we can't sell that calf, then there's no profit. Okay, so big three disease control. So pretty much when uh, veterinarians, when we talk to veterinarians, when we talk to producers, uh, when the conversation goes back to the pathogen. So I want to talk about BVD. So BVD is the big issue. Or we want to talk about lepto. We want to center everything on that pathogen, okay? But we've got to remember that this is kind of a multifactorial deal. So the pathogen is very important. But that pathogen is, is in a lot of places that you don't have disease, right? So it has a lot to do with the concentration of that pathogen. And then some of these pathogens, the virulence is different. For instance, BVD. There, BVD is a virus, but there's several subgroups in that virus. Some of them can be much more virulent than others. So, so you can see different, different manifestations of the disease, even with BVD. And again, the next thing is the, uh, is the host, okay? The host is, is what's the age of the host, what's the nutrition, what's the immune function of that host. So again, if, if you've got an animal that the immune function is not very good because of lack of nutrition, age, whatever, then you could vaccinate till the sun comes up and, and you might still be having issues. And then the other thing is the environment. So again, some of those, th that environment, we don't have much control over sometimes, right? So if, it's, if it doesn't rain, we don't have control over that. But, uh, and then again, like I said before, neighbors, uh, wildlife, stuff like that, all of those are gonna affect your herd health program. Okay, so a vaccination program. And when we talk to producers, again, like I said a while ago, most producers, uh, veterinarians, a lot of people, the herd health program is the vaccination program. And that I'm hoping when we get finished, you'll understand it's a lot more complex than that. But a vaccination program, let's talk a little bit about a vaccination program. It has to be tailored to your operation. In other words, we get a lot of argument, you know, there's pharmaceutical companies out here selling product, which is fine, but everybody's kind of slanting it to their deal. So if, if you're wanting to use X product and that product has to be boosted, then you need to booster that product. And if your facilities aren't so, or your help isn't so, if you've got to hire day workers and stuff to gather a little handful of cows it's going to cost, then you might want to take another approach, use another vaccine. So it's not like one vaccine is bad and the other vaccine's good. These vaccines kind of how they fit into your program. So some programs with diseases that allow it, like BVD, Modified live might work very well in your situation or in your neighbor's situation or if you had another, it, it wouldn't work at all. So again, you've got to tailor that vaccination program to your operation. And again, it, it would really pay you to sit down and have this discussion with your veterinarian rather than just going to the feed store, buying a bunch of vaccine and here we go. And the other thing I want to for a touch on as we go on, always more is not better because a, a lot of producers will come and they'll say, okay, I just go to the feed store and I tell them, give me everything I need. So, so again, we've got to remember that, that all, as with everything, vaccines help, but there's a little price to pay. So if I go in and I give a lot of, uh, let's say, gram-negative bacteria, 
uh, vaccines that cover gram-negative bacteria. If I give too many of those, I can actually impede the, vaccinate, the vaccination response. The other thing is, when do we give these products? Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people, well, when the kids are home or when the grandkids are home or when I can get the neighbor to help me or whatever. Uh, if, you're, if, if it's in August in College Station, Texas, the last thing you want to be doing is giving a vaccine at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Because, I mean, you put, the neat, you, you put it in a syringe and you put it in the animal, but is that vax, are you going to get a maximum immune response? And the answer is no. So if that animal is too hot, if that animal is stressed, and heat stress is a big factor, that's going to really affect your immune response. So again, not, not, uh, you need to plan how, when, and how to give these products. Okay. Again, what are your risks? And, and we talked about that a little bit a while ago. What, what's your neighbors, et cetera? How often do you get your cows up? How often is it practical for you to get your cows up? What's the length of your breeding season? Do you leave your bulls out all year round? And, or do you pick your bulls up in 90 days? Do you pick your bulls up in 120 days? Now again, I, I realize that with bulls, you can't always, you don't have a bull pasture. If you've got a little handful of cows, you might not have a place to put your bull. That doesn't mean you still can't have a controlled breeding season. You could go in and, and, and you could leave the bull with them, preg check your cows and kind of group your cows. So there's more than one way to skin a cat here. Again, do you purchase replacements or do you raise your replacements? So if you raise your replacements, you have a pretty good idea of what's happening with them, right? And so you know what the previous vaccination protocol is, you kind of know where to go. If you go buy replacements, then maybe or maybe you don't have a pretty good idea. Most important thing if you're purchasing replacements is know where they came from. And then safety and efficacy of vaccines, and I touched on a little bit of that a while ago. These vaccines are safe. Now again, they're not idiot proof. So if you go out and you give a bunch of some products to pregnant cows and it says on the label, do not give to pregnant cows, then you're probably gonna get in a wreck. So, so again, read the label before you use the product and make sure you stay on the label. Okay, so animal disease. And, and again, I borrowed this slide from, from a good friend of mine, uh, Dr. Dave Smith, who's, who's currently in, veterinarian with the uh, Mississippi State, but was the extension veterinarian up in uh, Nebraska for several years. And his deal is, have we come so complacent that our herd health program is centered around this bottle? In other words, is all of our, is all of our control in the bottle? And I hope by now we're figuring out the answer is no. Okay, so this slide I think is kind of important. We, uh, and so what this is going to talk about, what we're going to look here is, is by age, animals have different risk of disease, right? So what's, what's the first, first thing we see is uh, baby calves, right? When they hit the ground, what's the risk with baby calves? Usually it's going to be gastrointestinal problems, the scours, right? Diarrhea. So occasionally you can get some pneumonia and some other issues, but usually early on, diarrhea is the big issue, right? Then we get out here and we're fixing the wean calves, right? We get out here about six, seven months. What's her issues there? Usually the issues there is going to center more on respiratory problems, right? You have the stress of weaning. You have all the other, and, and you have your commingling with other cattle usually going into a stalker operation, the feeder operation. So that's when we start to see a lot of respiratory problems. We can still have some diarrhea, some gastrointestinal problems, but mainly focus on respiratory problems. Okay, then as we get on out, what's the big problem with our cow herd? And again, as we said it at the start of this talk, reproductive diseases. So this slide's pretty simple, and it's, it's basically uh, the immune response, you know, how much immunity do you have in your animals and how much challenge? So like I say, you have to be very careful in making diagnosis go out. And if I've got, I can go out and find a lot of healthy calves and I can take samples out of them, send them to a lab and I can find pathogens. Does that mean that pathogen's causing a problem? No. So, so again, I think we have to be very careful how we interpret some of these diagnoses and, and uh, you know, how we go to chasing things. So. Again, the immunity is very important, as we said a while ago, the, the basic health of the animal, the nutrition, keeping the stress off them, all the things to keep the immune response up. As long as that challenge, those bugs are down, you know, we can get an overwhelming challenge of bugs. We can, we can get some much bacteria, some many viruses, protozoa, whatever that's going to cause this problem. 
But as long as we can keep a separation between that, as long as we can keep our challenge below the, immune, uh, the immunity we have in the animals, we're pretty good. But of course, we have a red and a green line here. So once that red line, that challenge starts climbing, that means we have a lot more organisms out there, a lot more factors there. If the immune response stays the same, then we've got disease. And then by the same token, the same thing happens. What if our challenge stays about the same? You know, we've got about the same amount of bugs, but we start to lose the immune response for whatever reason. Then as that green line would go down, assuming the red line stays level, then again, any time those lines cross, you're going to have disease. So a basic understanding of the disease. Again, as, as I started to talk, we said it's important that you understand a little bit about the disease. You don't have to know all about the virus, in, 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 but you need to understand how it interacts. So how is it transmitted to your herd? If you don't know that, then how are you going to control it? How is it retained in your herd? Uh, how about carrier states? Very important in some diseases, BVD. Uh, and we're going to talk about BVD, but persistently infected BVD calves, that's the carrier state. That's the way the disease is maintained in nature. How about the EPSI of the vaccine? Again, no vaccine, and, I'm, and I just stress this, no vaccine is 100%. I think we all know that, but sometimes it's a little hard to reason that as, as you're given the product. I give the vaccine, I should have protection so I don't have an issue. And, that, and that's just not correct. Okay, and you must take the initiative to, to kind of start putting these things together. Nobody's going to do it for you. You go down to the co-op, the feed store, whatever. You tell them you want a vaccine. They're going to give you a vaccine, or they're going to spend a lot of time worrying about your deal, your particular uh, uh, operation. No. Again, you can go talk to your veterinarian. Veterinarians, just like everybody else, they're busy. And unless you take the initiative and sit down, kind of have designed, what, you know, what are the things I want to know? How can you help me with this? Don't just crash in on somebody and say, give me a herd health plan. All right?